Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is your Certified Life and Relationship Coach, Specialty in Health Science, Kendra Curry. So I'm back again today with another great video. Uh, we're gonna be discussing a few differences uh, between men and women. I just want to always bring information, empower you, inspire you. Again, I'm not a medical doctor. Um, I do have my degree in health science and I am a certified professional life coach. Um, but this information, I hope you just always find it useful and, and empower you and bring awareness to you. That's my disclaimer. So you guys, um, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have not already hit the subscribe button um, and please do feel free to share this information if you find it useful always uh, leave a comment in the comment box if you have something you want to add to the topic I'm always open to learning new things um, if there's something that you feel like you want to express uh, always feel free to do that and you can always catch me on my Instagram at Kendra Curry coaching or you can always email me at book at KendraCurry.com and you can always check out my website www.KendraCurry.com if you'd like to book a session and work with me um, and I'm going to go ahead and jump right in you guys so again this is going to be a few differences that I've noticed uh, between men and women with just research experience and I would like to provide that information with you today so um find it useful share it uh, with a friend so um as always i'm going to be using my notes um you know i feel more effective that way so do excuse me if i look down um and again just um always let me know if there's something that you'd like to add on about this topic or change about my presentation <laughs> but okay um so we're, you know, in a perspective of talking about um, men and women, you know, and this is more so in a relationship context, but really it could be any relationship, uh, father-daughter, it could be really, you know, ro romantic, marriage, um, whatever the relationship, dating, um, but I just hope that you um, take this in context and always... Um, you know, test it out against your knowledge. And these are just a few tips and things I've noticed. Um, and again, so um, to have happy and healthy relationships, there are some key fundamental traits we must exhibit. Um, whether your communication style is verbal, written, or physical communication, it must take place. And I believe a lot of people like to uh, refer to this as their love language, but I just think it's overall language in general that men and women do differ um, And it's not just a love language. It can be an anything language just how men and women process information um, I think that's something like becoming a topic now and more people are trying to understand the other sex and they're trying to understand the opposite gender and I just hope I can always um, help with that. So in relationships, um, more than often we take it for granted um, that the other person knows what we are thinking or feeling and I really, um, from my last um, join the topic i kind of went over this how you know what are some healthy things in relationships what are your needs and i noticed that the word communication has just stayed in my spirit and it has um just continued to ring an alarm within me and i feel like men and women we cannot take it for granted that the other person knows what we are thinking so a lot of times women are seen as certain ways and men are seen in certain ways so let's just keep going with that and so we'll see what i can come up with um to help you guys with uh, understanding what the other gender how they process information so that we can aim to that target that we're aiming for in communication and hit the mark okay because um definitely um we want to do that now uh, bear with me so as we speak there must be a clear path of communication so the other feels heard seen and understood and these are just my notes you guys that i have to take down so that i stay focused on the target okay 
So um, communication must happen as often and as frequent as possible in order to build trust and strengthen the connection and intimacy. So we must bridge the gaps of communication with one another since there are so many neurobiological differences in how we communicate. Um, I've realized that, you know, oftentimes why we're communicating and what we're communicating, um, that can be missed by the other person if they don't understand the nature of the other gender and kind of just going off of assumption or, you know, I, I know that they know what I'm thinking and um, trying to make it make sense to you in that moment sometimes is hard and communication can be a big, um, a big miss for a lot of relationships and my goal is to bridge that gap and um, I've outlined a few differences between men and women in their communication styles um, and, and just kind of like the nature of the differences um, between men and women. Um, so women, um, go ahead and jump right in. We tend to have a desire to want to be at one with others in communication. Um, I want to expand. I'm going to just keep going with these points, guys. So if you can just get a pen and paper, if you need to write it down or replay the video and watch it again, maybe to um, understand what I'm trying to get across. Um, so I've, I've researched and I've noticed that women have been by nature programmed to want to be at one with others in communication. Uh, women, uh, the second point is women are relationship oriented. Um, so if you're a male watching this and you're trying to understand what is it about a woman that's so different and these are some key points when you're in conversation to think about. You know, she's trying to strengthen the bond of the relationship. She's trying to she's more relationship oriented she's thinking her her nature is programmed that way so take that into consideration that she's she's not trying to come down on you and hopefully that that's not what's happening um and i hope that what's happening is that you're able to have an effective communication um, between the two of you um, but if there is a breakdown in communication and you're probably wondering why make sure that you understand in your mind that she's trying to she's more goal goal she's not as goal oriented I'm gonna get to that so that was the second point for women that they're more relationship oriented and I said goal because men tend to be more goal oriented but I haven't gotten to the men section yet but uh, let's keep going. Um, third point is women tend to reach out and talk about the cause of their stress. Um, women in conflict, they seek empathy and understanding and they seek unsolicited advice. So they may talk to a complete stranger at the grocery store. Um, they may talk to their neighbor. They may talk to their mother. You know, anyone in their community that'll listen. You know, women will do that. So let's go on. Um, men, men are different, ladies. So if you're a woman watching this video and you're trying to understand why is there a breakdown in our communication? What is it about our relationship? I'm not understanding. And it could be because of the programming is different than a than a woman. So um, if you are watching this video and you understand this, then you follow me. Sometimes the programming is just different, you guys. So let's try to be kind be patient with one another and really try to understand what the other person is feeling so we can be the best in our relationships and bring that bond close okay so men tend to desire women if you're watching um they desire to establish and maintain dominance so within the male um programming you know men tend to establish dominance with one another that's what they're programmed as um men are more goal oriented when they are in relationships um they tend to be more logical um men withdraw themselves in stressful topics um we may notice that and that can be kind of um, a breakdown for women and we won't get quite all the way into it um, how the breakdowns tend to happen but uh, further down in the video I will go over some ways um, that you know there 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 is a breakdown at times and that's what I would like to want to be in you know 
my videos just always a resource always a tool to help someone understand what's going on about a particular topic and empower you you know so um you know men withdraw themselves that's what research says that they will uh, withdraw themselves in stressful topics and i have uh, personally seen this and it can be harmful to the relationship and we do not want that so they have to, they're programmed a certain way, so they may check out in order to check in with their feelings. So if it feels like it's like a an attack on you, if you're a woman watching this, it can be an attack if it feels that way, but you shouldn't process, I can't say you shouldn't because those are your feelings and you can feel how you feel, but know that men tend to program information in differently so they need time a little bit longer time than women um, to communicate their feelings so he may have to check out for a couple hours and process what your demands are or what your requests are what your needs are because he may not have an answer just readily off the bat so be patient and be kind okay so um, he may say something in the moment if he does not check out that he will regret and he doesn't want to say the wrong thing. So if you're tending to notice him become distant, the more you're putting more demand, it's almost like this push and pull kind of thing. So don't allow that to disrupt your knee and don't continue as a woman. I hate to sound pushy, but make sure that you're giving space and room for him to be able to logically process the demand because men are programmed from research differently. They have to have time to process information. So don't find it as an offense and use that time to go do something you like. Go find you an activity to stay busy and always just keep pushing to be your highest version of yourself so that when the conversation does come back that you're you're sober minded and you're able to think clear and that you're not angry about the time that was spent processing what it is that you're uh, requesting of your mate. Um, so um, give time for his deliberations you know um, sometimes we might take it for granted again that the other person has felt or experienced what we're asking before and they may not be experienced in the relationship they may not understand what angle to take you know they have a concept like what's behind door number one what's behind door number two you know a lot of men process like that they're trying to think well if I do this then this is gonna happen and if I do that then that's gonna happen a lot of men process that way so they uh, may have not set with this topic before and so he can't pull from something that he's never been through so um, he may need time to research he may need time to pull on an older cousin or brother or just pull on God he may just be needing time to himself you know um, to just figure out what it is that you're asking and how he can approach it logically so he doesn't hurt your feelings so um, men can take time few several hours maybe seven to eight maybe a day maybe two weeks to process it depends on what his load is in his life and what's going on so again um, allow time for that deliberation to take place so that he can be able to meet your needs and what you're asking but he should communicate that he needs time i feel in order to let you know that he's not forgotten your request and if it takes for you to check in with each other to let you know i'm still deliberating i'm still thinking and that should be addressed um and not just swept under a rug okay all right so in the formative years, you have to think um, that a man is told, you know, big boys don't cry, shake it off, right? So men are there, they have this uh, masculine exterior, but they're still little boys at times in there, just like we have a little girl inside of us at times, but that should be well managed with communication. Um, and however, I'm saying that to say that men want to feel, they want to feel proud at times. And if you use your language ineffectively to 
take that little that 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 person in him who's used to being built up when he was a child um and you know from that i'm trying to say they're told to shake it off and be strong and be all these things and be tough and not cry so but they still need time to feel good about themselves they need time to know that someone's there to nurture them um and with that i'm saying that men need to um be able to have this sense in a relationship as well um that they're strong and independent and um that they're heard and seen and these are just a few attributes that i'm going over but um i just want you to keep that point in mind um so remember that in the formative years that he was told big boys don't cry shake it off that's going to also come back into play when it comes around to attributes and how um i will talk about those so just remember that but um i had to mention it now so in um conflict men tend to offer solutions okay um, they're made up as doers research shows that they're made to take action okay um, their DNA wants to fix things naturally um, so again they don't have all the answers sometimes and as quickly as we like um, so again we have to allow them take a step back uh, figure things out um, don't automatically jump to calling him a failure okay um, because the process is ongoing at times for them to understand what the relationship needs and how can he fix it okay he's naturally trying to come up with a way and it's ongoing sometimes you know um but women we want the answer when we want it and we want it right now and we have to not take it for granted that he has the answer right now again he may have not experienced this situation before or it may be something um, new to him. So let's always try to be productive, not counterproductive, and do not call a man a failure or uh, any negative names. Okay? So um, what men and women won't tell each other does harm the relationship. So I just wanted to go over some attributes, as I was just mentioning a little bit before um of men and women so we're getting ready to wrap this up guys i know i have been blabbing and going on but this is just something i have to um get out and hopefully you guys are enjoying this video click the thumbs up if you're enjoying this so i can um be able to share this information with the community guys you know and get a part of this conversation going you know so we can learn so hit the like it helps the algorithm and youtube and i believe you know more people click on it and learn and that's what we want to do is be able to um teach one another and inspire and encourage and empower one another so okay um, these are a few attributes, of course, me being a woman, I would know, and just experience and research. Um, so the woman must feel um, in the relationship that um, a man respects her, um, that he is a good listener, um, that he desires her, um, that the man is able to lead, um, he, that he cannot just lead with his finances. I know it's a big misconception. A lot of times, especially in 2021, that women on, are only seeking men for, you know, different gains. And we do get in relationships because there are benefits. But it should not be solely in the man's mind that a woman is seeking only financial provision. Um, she's looking for the man that is able to lead her um to lead with his emotions um also not just logic i mean i know it's a uh an idea of some men that if a woman sees a man you know and his emotions that she won't respect him the same and i and i beg to differ i really think that a lot of relationships can you know bond better having that transparency you know we know that the emotions are there right because he's human he has feelings and if he cuts his finger he's gonna bleed <laughs> so he's human so the woman knows that emotions are there and I, you know even speaking with male friends and hearing that men think this way like they are they're gonna have that exterior shell and just because he he chooses to hide it it doesn't mean that it's not there 
And we we truly know as women that if, if you love us, if you care about us, that you will allow us to penetrate your emotions and be able to have that bond with you because there's nothing like being able to leave with your emotions and at times if the woman feels you know unsure or insecure or unsafe in a relationship sometimes it will take for the man to lead and, and put himself on the line and you know just like Christ did he put himself on the cross for us and loved us and sometimes in relationships a man has to do that and lead with his emotions and he has to lay his life down and say you know I know it's not the most most manly macho thing to do show my emotions but hey he's got it in him because he loves her and he's going to lead with his emotions and that my friends is a good good sign so um a woman wants to know that he can lead with his emotions and uh, make sure he's not just stringing her along you know just for the fun of it you know so many marriages are ending and divorce and i you know it's just my heart goes out and that was one reason why I wanted to become a relationship coach just because I do not want to see a relationship fail and I understand that it does happen but um, I'm hoping that I can be on the other end of that and be able to bring awareness and empower people to stay together because it's beauty in it and I and I value it um, so um, she needs to know that it's not just about financial provision. I did state that. That he's invested or interested in her goals and her dreams and overall well-being. Remember, guys, women are relationship-oriented. So it's about the unity in the relationship. Um, so she wants the man to have a strong intellectual, emotional, and spiritual foundation um, it provides her confidence that he can lead. Um, and it is seeming like it's all about leadership, you know, for women. The communication matches with leadership because if you're a strong communicator as a husband or as a boyfriend or whatever status you're in, if you're a strong communicator, a woman is going to be 99.9% .9 of the chance more readily able to follow more readily able to submit and do those things that the relationship requires in order for you to have a healthy relationship so that's why I would like to provide these attributes because it's 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 needed so um, in return the man must feel that he's maintaining honor don't forget we talked about men like to make sure they're establishing dominance um so it's not so much dominance in a relationship but he wants to maintain that honor that respect and praise men need cheerleaders it gives them enthusiasm and momentum um I, I love to see women cheer their husbands and it's just like a, a joy about it for me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just hope that I pray in my next relationship I will be able to be a big, big, big cheerleader. Um, I, I don't know if I was as big of a cheerleader, but I have no hard feelings towards my ex-husband in regards to the things that we felt at. But um, definitely being a cheerleader is something that I noticed that um, it can help. It can definitely help the relationship. Okay, guys? So, um, men know that they're going to make mistakes and, and they're not perfect. But when that moment comes, are you going to be his biggest cheerleader or going to be his biggest heckler are you going to tell him that he's you know not smart you know are you going to be there to encourage him what side of the fence are you on because it will affect a man opening up and they kind of get into a um turtle shell as you will and they want to hide their emotions when um you have been verbally um not responsible i'll say so Definitely you have to work on the language and the timing and the communication ladies because men have to feel that sense of honor and respect and They have to maintain that momentum because you don't know what they're dealing with internally. Okay So, um, can you, uh, they want you to offer your opinion? Can you offer your opinion ladies if you're watching this and not be condescending? So these are just some things that I've researched that I see that men are wanting they want your help, but they do not want the condescending remarks. Okay? <laughs> All right. 
Um, and if you would like um, more um, information in any of these topics, I'll put a link in my description box of a few resources, a few books. Um, I know there was the John Gray's um, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. We all have heard and read and quoted that book. And um, also there is another one, Michael and um, Michael Gurian, what he could be thinking. A few quotes from him seem really good. Gotta check that out. Um, but yeah, guys, this is the end of this video. Um, we are all still mysterious creatures to one another. And I pray that we are taking the time to really try to bridge the gap. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. As always, um, please email me. I know my um, domain is at the end of that email address. Um, it's always book at com. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it. Um, but um, until next time, guys, love you. Bye.